me because they cared so much about how I was as a nurse. Oh, okay. And then same vice versa within where I'm working now, most of us are of our community, which is a oh, okay. blessing. And we get to provide that care together and get to be that, you know, we worked hard for our degrees. We busted that so we could be there for those that didn't get that care. Mm -hmm. So thankfully, the only time I really ever ran issue in, in the past being a registered nurse and being of our community is that I did do a job interview up in a, a little bit wealthier part of uh, Indiana and I did two interviews and after the in-person interview, the poor manager was almost in cheers apologizing mm -hmm. for saying, denying me the job, though they had no other interviewee. And her excuse was that I was too empathetic. And I was like, ma'am, I'm pretty sure that's chart one on being an, a nurse, but I understand what you're saying. And so mm -hmm. in hindsight, it was a blessing, but I feel I was too me. In that sense of, you know, of being us for yeah. those individuals. So well, I respected it. Well, you know, sometimes these life is challenging. And it's wonderful that you are, you know, I mean, you're pushing forward. And this is a good thing, pushing forward. Now, let's talk to you, Sage, about you being a show queen. I mean, a show entertainer. And do you miss Las Vegas? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> terrible! If I wasn't a ginger, <laughs> and he treats you too. if he wasn't a ginger with his hair and red hair, I would be moving back to Vegas after I graduate. <laughs> because of the sun, I I would I can go visit Vegas and come home to him. We've, we've agreed him. on a condo hustle. Right. We'll, we'll, okay. we'll work hard for the month. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, you know, even though I live in Canada, I'm originally from Florida. I, oh, I, okay. I, I, I was born in Orlando and I grew up in Fort Lauderdale in Miami. And I came to, I've been in Canada now 35 years. But um, yes. Florida would be a great place for the two of you. And as you as a nurse there, William, you could make a great living in Florida. You can make a great living. I know you might not be able to want to deal with them hurricanes and all that. <laughs> but overall, Florida is beautiful. And we actually just to... went for the first time for myself in 31 years. I never had been for mm -hmm. my birthday last year. So that was exciting for me. <laughs> yeah, Florida is a beautiful place and it's 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 clean and it's it's I know I'd rather be in Canada. Oh, <laughs> 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 you don't want to be, it's freezing here and that's all right i can take the cold she can wear blankies <laughs> oh <laughs> now <laughs> let's talk a little bit about what you what your guys's plans are for the future what, what are you planning to do are you guys going to get married or are you married now we are well <laughs> we ask on the regular <laughs> you're actually as of 2023 you are officially the sixth person to ask us that since the Seven, new year. Because I got asked. <laughs> I got asked another time, but, but without you. We get asked <laughs> often about marriage. And we are we are very much in love with each other, but I'm we're gonna wait till the time is right. And you know, you'll you'll know when it's right. Mm -hmm. um, Why rush a good thing? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So a, a ring on a finger is wonderful, but it's a tradition. Mm -hmm. It is just a tradition that is obviously symbolically represented, obviously, in a very religious aspect. My love for her does not change with a ring on that finger or not. Now, can I just say this? I, I, I want to talk a little bit about your experience going into our bars, our community. You as a couple. Sage, when you introduce William to your friends, what do they think? Well, the funny thing about it is that he, he was already a part of the community before. So oh, okay. there was really no need to introduce him. The shock came when people actually realized that we were together. <laughs> that was the shock because 
they didn't mind. see us. <laughs> they didn't see us coming together. And truth be no, truth be told, we didn't either. You know, it, it just happened. Honestly, it literally came out of the clear blue. Uh, he he was bringing me home one night because so I wouldn't have to call an Uber, and I'll team up. And <laughs> <laughs> we were coming up the road, and I, I just went the wrong to, way. He did go the wrong way because I thought she still lived where she used to live. We were coming up the road, <laughs> and I just happened to look over to my left and look at him for the first time, and it just hit me. Oh wait a minute, he is kind of cute. <laughs> I never looked at him through that through that lens until that night, that very moment. Mm. And um, so as much of, the, of a surprise as it was for the community, it was a surprise for us as well. Mm. And then it just kind of flowed naturally from that point. You know, I like I like the way you said that. The way you said it was incredible because it, it, it really connected the two of you. I can see that you... The two of you are very smart people. And I like that. I like smart people. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean she's, a, she's an older, o- older white lady and she's very smart. But she hates being on camera and I try to drag her over here. So she's like, not having it. But um, I like smart people that ha- the way you've talked today means that you have dealt with a lot of the adversity in a positive manner and just kept kept it moving. And this is something our community should understand that we have to live our lives and just keep it moving. We can't all, we have to face adversity, of course, but we have to face it head on. We can't be hiding anymore. This is in the fact that the two of you are I can look at you and see that both of you are very comfortable in your skins and who you are. And this has made a great impact on on me. Just looking at you, I would never know that either William, you weren't born male or Sage, you weren't born female because you look, you you know, like a normal, what, what they call a normal family. Now, let's talk a little bit about the government in the U.S. Let's talk a little bit about that clown show that's going on in that House of Representatives with all these different, they're trying, Sage, you as an entertainer, it really must affect you with all the negative stuff that they're saying about trans people and drag queens. You know what? I find it... I find it comical, honestly. It it, it kind of makes our government look a little jokish because when you look at the situation as a whole, you realize that it's, it has nothing to do with what they're pushing it to be. It has nothing to do with gay this or queens that or kid that. It has nothing to do with that at all. If that was a, if that was the case, we wouldn't have had such successful movies right. as We've Tootsie or Too Wong Fu or Some TV like shows. Hot. TV mm-hmm. shows like Bosom Buddies. We would never have had those shows. This isn't new. People dressed in drag and performing has never been new. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's here. It's been here. So that, that shows you that that's not the issue. Mm-hmm. Now, the question is, what is the real issue? What is the real agenda? What, what's going on? Well, you know, it's a good thing that, the, that I... You, to me, I, there's two things. I want to. I'm, I'm going to address you now, Sage, about this because I think that it needs to be said. RuPaul, who has the biggest drag show on television now, mm-hmm. and yet she hasn't stepped up to defend the drag queens for Storybook Hour or the trans community where she comes from, Atlanta. And the fact that the young kids who have won these shows and gone on to make lots of money in a lot of the few that have made millions of dollars, you don't see them speaking up about any of these issues. And this is something that's very concerning. You still see the old guard, meaning the older queens, still stepping up to um, protect the community and stand up for their rights. Now, why do you think that is? Well, it all comes down to a dollar. Yeah. There's so much to lose. There's so much to lose. Most of these entertainers are, you know, 
bless their hearts, they're making more money than they ever anticipated in making. And they're making the best decisions for themselves because everyone has to put food on the table. Everyone has to build a future. So I cannot, I cannot go forward without understanding and respecting that they are doing what's best for their own lives. Uh, you know, charity starts at home. You have to take care of yourself before you can take care of others. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, those girls are doing what they're supposed to do to secure their own lives. Now, the reason that we have, by the grace of God, still the old guard is because these people have, uh, these, inter these entertainers have paved the way. They know the fight. Uh, they understand the cost and they're willing to pay it. But they were also never offered, afforded the opportunity to make the money like these entertainers today do. Mm -hmm. You know, this is what they know. And by the grace of God, we have them and are able to rely on them because they stay at the forefront to fight. They yell when nobody else yells, when everyone wants us to be silent. Our, our, our community guard, as I would call them, are still there. Wonderful. Well, you know, that's wonderful. I, I wanted to say that because, you know, me being on the internet so much and, 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 and trying to, I got my, our mailboxes is full every day with people wanting to share their stories and talk about the stories. But she made it really clear to me the direction we're going to take pronoun TV in. And it needs to be about real life and real stories and what's happening now. And what's going to, what, what we have to do to make sure that we're going to be okay in the future to make sure that our voice are being loud and heard. Because now we're getting this thing here, um, this, this thing online about Black men. And I'm going to just, I, I'm, I'm going to say it to you, William, as a man, as you identify as a man now, and then you, Sage, as, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a Black woman. This masculine and feminine thing has really taken over the internet about men on the DL and this masculine feminine thing. How, what, what do you feel about that? Uh, so at the end of the day, I feel like gender is always gonna be a spectrum. I'm gonna respect you however you wanna present. I don't agree with hyper-masculinity because I think it's toxic, nor do I agree with hyper-femininity because I feel like it's also toxic because I feel like those extremes have been ingrained in their families at some point mm -hmm. where a hyper femininity might mean I'm willing to forego it all to just rely on a man to take care of me or that type of, that type of toxic hyper masculinity being a, well, I am better than you because I am almighty man. And it, it's, it's hard when you know it is a spectrum and it's, it's where can we go from here to decide it's okay as a man to show emotion, have emotion, express emotion to where you don't get to the point where we get shootings and mental health needs like that, which is often in this country, predominantly Caucasian males. And then in the same spectrum of females, Stand up for yourself, because when you were called in the workforce as Rosie the Riveter and asked to go back home, not every woman went back home and they took charge and took lead. There is always a good in between, and we just got to find that ground. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I need to cut you off. When it comes to the DL thing, coming from the African American community, because I won't deal with it. I've also, I've always felt like, um, and I've dealt with my share of DL men. Of course I have. You know, most, most girls in my situation at some point do. Mm -hmm. And those who don't are either really lucky or lying. But mm -hmm. with that being said, uh, when it comes to DL men, it's not always about the lie. That's the misconception about DL men. It's not about the lie always. Oftentimes, these men are not even allowed to be in safe spaces where they can be who they are for fear of being vilified by their community, meaning the African-American community. Yeah, you have family. men that would proudly walk in the day with the, with the people that they love, but what do they lose? They'll lose their family, uh, the respect their of their friend, friends their and, and, and their community. You know, so it's it's a, a very 
hard road for oftentimes a, a DL man to walk, you know, not to excuse their behavior, right. but to give some understanding because I've known more than my fair share of DL men who always have spoken about what they stood to lose and they just don't want to lose their families. They don't want to lose their kids or even the respect of their parents, most importantly, you know, so. Mm -hmm. And not to cut either of you off, you know, like I have actually had this conversation with her. I've had African-American DL men approach me on a multitude of occasions because they'll, they'll start the question because, you know, they're very good at clocking because I'm, I'm a little bit shorter. And so sometimes they'll be like, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they'll be like, are you one of those boys? And I go, what do you mean one of those boys? And they go, you know, and I go, I am, but I appreciate it. I'm not interested. And it, it, it's hard road to toe yeah. because I respect that, that that's something they want and are used to somebody who has maybe my genitalia, mm -hmm. but it, it's a hard road to toe because like I said, I don't like to deal with it because I don't want you to live in shame and fear. That makes me feel guilty for you feeling like you have to be DL because of the way you were raised and the community in which you were raised. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to say this conversation was very interesting today. You guys, you guys are an amazing couple. And I am really glad that we didn't follow the script today. And she's glad too, that we didn't follow the script today. And um, you guys are amazing. I want to say thank you, William Henry and Sage Summers for being on the show today. You educated us a lot. And I want to say to the audience out there, I want to just say, live your life, live your life, be who you want, be who you are, and just live it every day loudly and proudly. That's the only way you can get the respect that you want is to constantly make sure that people respect you and you respect them and you just keep it moving. And William Henry and Sage Summers, um, I want to say thank you guys so much for doing the show today. You educated us a lot. Um, congratulations, William, on just being who you are. Thank and you. Sage, you for, you know, accepting William for who he is and understanding where your relationship is. And I like the fact that <laughs> don't let that face be in his place. <laughs> <laughs> and the fact that you guys communicate. This is an amazing thing. Communication is key to any relationship. And the fact that you're open and honest with each other. And I like that. I, I, I like strong, Ex smart. Experience people. and age. It comes with it. Because sometimes life throws some things at your way you don't expect. And you learn and you grow. There you go. Like now, I, I want to say that. I love can overcome. I'm glad, no I'm glad that the two of you talk everything out and you and you talk with sense and and the fact that you sage are getting an education now because you know down the road there's going to be some challenges with drag right. there's gonna be some real challenges if they keep pushing this stuff through we can't go out and do shows like we used to I mean how can we, we we can barely afford to make a living with a lot of the entertainers I mean they're lucky that they're making the money that they're making these days but soon they're going to have to hire people like celebrities do to protect them and in the long run is all of this going to be worth it and um uh, and how do we you know um get people on the same page as us when it comes to entertainment and understanding that this is just entertainment. It's just like, you know, I'm a stand-up comedian. For years here in Canada, they silenced me. They they because they said that I was I had I was filling the rooms up, but they they were complaining so much that I had a filthy mouth or this and that. And at the end of the day, I've been here 35 years and I'm still working and now I own a company. So I am I am just lucky. I they mean, said curse lucky. words, Jess, are make a colorful vocabulary and highly intelligent people know them. <laughs> That's a scientific fact. <laughs> so I want to say thank you guys so much for doing the show today. And once it... Um, Question for you, Stephanie. 
when are you going to pack up and come do a, a pronoun TV show live from Indianapolis? Come see us. We can, we can do that in the summer. When is the summer there? Uh, it, it's it's the same uh, as, as as most places. It's uh, basically June through end of August. Well, why don't we talk about that? Come yes, party with us. Come yes, party with us. Will. I we will talk about that. We'll come right on down there. I, I like that. I like that. Look at you. We saying. have a couple of their couples that are very interesting that I think you would enjoy talking. And to. we we talked about you to them. So and as they well. have entirely different dynamics than we do. We that do. you will love. Wonderful. Well, you know what? I, I promise. I promise I will reach out to you and we will do it. Yes, we ma'am. Will. Okay. Thank you guys so much for being on the show today. Thank and you. thank you everyone out there in, 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 in the world of television and the internet. Take care of yourselves. Be safe. Be smart. And just keep it moving. And remember, be who you are and be loud and proud. Thank you so much, William Henry and Sage Summers today on Pronoun TV and the Stephanie Stevens Show. Thank you and good night. Good night. That was great.